Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. I am excited to see you all on this Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Impact Live, where we are impacting lives one life at a time. I am your host, Reverend Dr. David T. Miller, pastor of Wesley Union Amy Zion Church here in the beautiful city. Uh, the capital city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Shout out to all my friends, my family, my loved ones. Uh, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. It is good to see you all. Well, actually, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be uh, with you all again on this Sunday morning. And I can see you in the spirit. I pray you are doing well. Whatever you're doing right now, whether you are still uh, eating on your morning breakfast slash brunch, um, maybe you have something prepared, maybe you already got your word out getting ready, maybe you're drinking your coffee and or your tea. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm always excited about uh, coming forth and speaking to God's people and giving God's word and word of encouragement to God, to you on days like today. For this is the day that the Lord has made and always we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, everyone. As I like to start this uh, program off, start off a word of prayer, and then we'll jump into the word. Um, and before we go into prayer, I want to lift up a couple of my friends. One of my friends, Aaron Sype, always got you lifted up in prayer. I know you're going through therapy, got you lifted up in prayer. Uh, the members here at Wesley Union who have been through um, surgery, Brother Fred Chadwick, who has been through some surgery, Brother Roberts, who has been through surgery, and others that do stand in need of prayer. Definitely chime in, send us a note. We'll keep you lifted up in prayer as well. And we're praying for our country continually as we are slowly coming out of this pandemic that is before us, uh, this COVID-19, this virus, where the numbers go up and then they go down, then they go back up again. So we pray indeed that uh, a vaccine is found uh, to take care of everybody for such a time as this. Uh, let us uh, look to God in prayer. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done and all you continue to do for us. As you continue to watch over, bless and keep us, and your anointing be upon us as fresh as the morning dew. Bless those of God whose names have been lifted up for prayer on this morning. Watch over, bless, keep them, and comfort those of God who need your loving arms wrapped around them. And we, your children, be ever so careful to always give your name to praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about the word on today as we are getting ready to come out of this pandemic. I was in meditation and me and God had a really good conversation. In my prayer and meditation life, I always take time to listen and want to hear God's voice. That's a point I want to make to everybody. Anytime you get an opportunity to get into God's word, take time to listen to what God is saying. And today, if you could, journey with me, if you will. Paul's letter to the people of Rome. Paul's letter to the people of Rome. That is Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans chapter six. And I'm going to read for you verses 18 through 23. That's Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 18 through 23. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Once again, that's Romans chapter 6, verse 18 through 23. Uh, the book of Romans, as some of you all may know, uh, those out there, is really one of Paul's journeys, a place where he calls home, a um, place where he spends his time, where he grew up. So now Paul finds himself preaching to the people he's been around. As you know, Paul has made his way up the chain. He's been to school, got a professional job, and he, he, at one, one moment in time, he was going around, going to the magistrate, getting letters to go find people who believed in the way or those who were followers of Jesus Christ. His main goal was to crucify them, to, perse to persecute them, to take them down. And now he had a change in his life. Uh, you know, everybody... Uh, has at least one time in your life where a change came over you. And prayerfully, that change evolved and shifted your whole life around where you see things different than the way you did before. I don't know about you, but that's a, that's a shout moment right there, that you don't see things the same way you used to. Amen, somebody. And Paul is speaking and teaching 
preaching to the people in his letter and writing them and letting them know that a change has come. And not only has a change come, that the lifestyle and everything in which has been done needs to change as well. Because the people were battling with sin on a regular basis. As Paul tells them, hey, the, whenever I want to do good, evil is always present among us. So if you look in Romans chapter 6, I'm going to pick up at verse 18. Paul says these words. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves or servants of righteousness. I am using an example for, from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Oh, wow. Somebody felt that right there. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? <clears throat> Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin, and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is indeed eternal life in Christ Jesus. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I want you to focus on a brief moment on this morning, if you will. A pandemic called sin. A pandemic called sin. Let us pray. Raise God everlasting Father. Touch, bless, anoint as I give a word to your people that indeed they can leave this place better than when they came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A pandemic called sin. In the midst of everything going on right now in our lives, with COVID-19, of people being in isolation, slowly coming out of isolation, uh, we had this thing called the pandemic, which is the coronavirus. The coronavirus, which was so contagious that people have to practice social distancing of at least six feet. So contagious that people were asked to wear masks, in some cases gloves, to continuously wash your hands or sanitize your hands. Wipe down all your surfaces on your cabinets and countertops. Even after you go to the grocery store, uh, we wipe down the items that we purchased in the grocery store because this virus was that serious. But I'm here to tell you about a virus that has been around longer than the coronavirus. It's called the virus called sin. That pandemic set off and we've been in that pandemic ever since and have not been able to escape the bonds of it. Now I'm reminded of my son Ellis. My son Ellis, he loves train. He has Thomas the Train, has the tracks. Uh, one particular day, he decided to take his train tracks and train set and give it to his younger brother Emerson. He says, here Emerson, here's the train you can have. Because at this time, Ellis no longer had a need for it. He's into Minecraft now and playing other games on his tablet. It's amazing. He takes, gives Emerson the train and his track. But he noticed one day that Emerson had the track put together. And he had the train and he was going around in circles on the track. Made the track just one circle and Emerson was taking the train going around and around. No, Bring to this morning's topic the pandemic called sin. We are in this pandemic called sin because of the things that which we have come accustomed to doing. We're in a day and time where right is wrong and wrong is right. In a day and time filled with what people call fake news and alternative facts that nobody wants to step up and do the right thing. And when individuals do step up to the plate and say, hey, this is wrong. Or, hey, 
That's not correct. People get upset when you want to fact check them. People get upset and uh, go into a whole Twitter tantrum when you call out a lie or when you want to address something that's not said or done in a proper fashion. Well, this is the pandemic called sin that we live in. So there are three things I want us to know and understand why we are in this pandemic called sin and what we can do during this pandemic. Uh, point number one, uh, you have to understand that, ask the question, are you a skilled or unskilled worker? Don't miss the text. The text says that the wages of sin is death. The wages. Uh, some of y'all out there are educators and teachers. You already know the definition. You know what a wage is. A wage is what is paid to an unskilled worker. Uh, that is why in some jobs that people start, they start them off at what is called a minimum wage. Because the job that you applied for, now that you're working, you have no experience at it. So they have a minimum wage that which they give you as they train you. Uh, some of you know about Cracker Barrel. When you go there, you see individuals walking around who are just starting. They have a certain number of stars on their aprons that tells how much experience they have. Uh, when you go to McDonald's and other fast food restaurants, or at least when you could go to those restaurants, you would see individuals every now and again who are being trained at the register. And someone behind them telling them what numbers to push and how to ring different things up. And as a matter of fact, sometimes we even see people who are manager trainees because they are wage employees uh, and they're unskilled, untrained. So they're going along, figuring out along the way. Well, it's interesting because some of us are wage sinners. Amen, somebody. Anybody a wage sinner? You was a wage sinner because you just started off. Uh, you started off sinning. You really didn't know what sin was. You just did what somebody told you to do or looked like it was fun. Uh, some of us have been trained in the wage sinning. Uh, make it plain, Reverend Miller, uh, when you were young and you answered the phone at home and your mother or father said to, said to you, tell them I'm not here. Oh, yeah, that was a lie. That, that, that was a lie. You had just started lying and you didn't even realize it. Uh, right now you're laughing about it because you know that you that either happened to you or you were parent like myself and maybe you do it right now. Uh, you, you were unskilled, untrained or when you went to the grocery store and while you went down the produce aisle, you picked up the bunch of grapes and you saw mom or dad eating on the grapes and you thought it was just fine. So when you went to the candy aisle, that's why you got a piece of candy and started eating on that too. Oh yeah, you was a unskilled sinner. You were just sinning because you thought it was right and you just did what was right in your own sight. Uh, but let's be honest now, there are some people who are unskilled or sinners, but there are some people who are salaried sinners. Yes, salary centered uh, sinners. Uh, salaried sinners are those who get paid professional bucks. Uh, someone who is salary, that means you got the craft down pat. Uh, you went to school, you have the degree, so you know exactly what you're doing so you can demand a high salary for the, for the work that you can do and the degrees that you have. Oh yeah, some of us are salaried sinners because uh, we are paid professional sinners. Uh, what do you mean, uh, Brother Miller? Oh, you've been to the school of life and you got your PhD in synology. So you know how to sin. Now, there ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. You, some of us right now, you can sin with the best of them. Is there a witness in the building that you can testify that you can sin with the best of them? As a matter of fact, truth be told, some of us could plan our sin out uh, ahead of time. You knew what time you were going to sneak out the house because you knew what time mom and dad was going to sleep. You knew what time that to meet the person at the corner. You knew what time uh, to get the extra hours in at your job. You knew what time when to call in the job and swap someone out and then call back and say that you was calling in sick. Uh, you knew what time you was going to meet someone. You knew what time and the place you was going to meet them at. And the truth be told, some of us even knew the story, the lie we was going to tell. When we got back, we would practice that lie in the mirror when we got back or when we got caught, when we got busted. We were salaried sinners. We were professionals at this thing because we knew how to get out. We knew what stories we could use to get out of problems, out of situations. Uh, there, there's, there's a witness in the building right now. I know you're laughing at yourself because you know some of the stories you mapped out. 
to the T. You knew where you were going. You knew who you was going to do it with. And you knew what you was going to say when you got there. Professional sinners. So the question you have to ask yourself, are you a skilled or unskilled worker? Because the wages, the cost of what we do, there is a price for it. Uh, that, so the second point is this pandemic uh, sin that we state, state that we are in. The second thing is dealing with spiritual death. Dealing with spiritual death. So you already know whether you are a wage sinner or a salary sinner. And Paul tells us that the wages of our sin is death. Understand, it's not meaning that it's going to be a physical death, but there is what is called a spiritual death. The spiritual death is how you feel after you sin. Some of us find ourselves fall into a sinful nature or do things that we've been fighting against, has been pushing and pulling us. As Paul says, whenever I want to do good, evil is always present. Uh, the things that which I ought to do, I don't do. And the things that I ought to do, I do not. And I find myself doing the things that I should not do. And a matter of fact, Paul even later tells us that he finds it a tug of war, pulling back and forth. Uh, but the state that you feel when you sin. Think about the times or the moments you lied to somebody you really cared about. How did you feel after you told the lie? Think about how you felt when you got back with someone in a hookup. You wish you wouldn't have hooked up back with. Uh, I'm not going to get into that this morning, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. We deal with a spiritual death. And when we deal with the spiritual death, we deal with moments of depression, anxiety, confusion, heartache, desperation, anger. All those when we have a spiritual death because we no longer have a connection with God. Ah, uh, don't miss it. We've seen this before where someone has a spiritual death and the connection with God is not there as it used to be. My Bible readers, come on in here. My Bible readers, you know, the text says that there Adam and Eve was and they had a conversation with the serpent. Adam was standing right there next with Eve as they had this conversation. Both of them ate of the fruit. Both of them were, uh, fell into the sinful nature. Both of them were responsible. So we can't blame the woman for it. It was both of them. And the text says that their God was comes in the garden, the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are you? Now it's interesting. Adam decides to hide himself, which is the worst game of hide and seek ever played. That's, that's it. The worst game of hide and seek ever played. And Adam says, I was hiding from you, Lord. And the Lord says, no, but where are you? I know where you are physically, but where are you spiritually? Let that sit right there for a second. Ask yourself the question, where are you spiritually right now? Are you out of touch, out of connection with God right now? Because of a sinful state, sinful life that you have been living over the past couple of days, over the past couple of weeks, maybe the past couple of hours. And you are out of touch with the master. And you're feeling like you're lost and you can never get back to him. Oh, we've all been in that state. But I'm going to tell you, there is good news. There is good news. No matter how far lost you are. No matter how confused yet you may feel right now, no matter how that you may feel that there's no hope for you and God is going to cast you out and you don't have a chance of opportunity. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Here's the text getting good. It said the wages of sin is death. But the gift. Ah, uh, my final point is God left us a remedy. My, my, my. God left us a remedy. Uh, in the middle of the pandemic and COVID-19, we don't have a remedy. But God left, left us a remedy for sin. Oh, yes, he did. God left a remedy because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that is through Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. 
Don't miss it. Don't miss it. The gift of God. John 3, 16. So, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we may not perish, but have a chance of everlasting life. That is the gift that God left us. So we have an opportunity, even in our sinful nature, as bad as we can be, or as bad as we feel we are right now, God loves us so much that God will take us as we are. But he loves us so much that he won't leave us the way he found us. Ooh, amen, somebody. I know you may have felt that right then, to know that I've been in a sinful nature. I've done some things that I should not have done. I've said some things that I should not have said. As a matter of fact, some of us are even in a state where we cannot even forgive ourselves but God says, I forgive you. I gave you a gift. I gave you my only son, Jesus Christ, who came to take away the sins of the whole world. And he died on the cross for you and for me. And all we have to do is say, Father, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Saved by your grace. I messed up, God. And you know the beauty of it is? Sometimes we get so deep in our prayer to God, we can say, Lord, I messed up. I rest up really bad this time like never before. Mm. The moment you say, Lord, I messed up, that's your confession. The moment you say, God, that's on me. I, I'm sorry, Lord. Will you please? Don't you know God will forgive you of every single solitary sin? Oh, yeah, that's a shout moment for you. That, that's a shout moment. That, that ought to make you feel good this morning. That ought to make you feel good. Go ahead and wash that down with your coffee, your tea, your Kool-Aid, your water, whatever it is you're drinking. Wash that down and say, I feel good this morning, Lord. All I have to ask you to forgive me, and you will. I thank you, Lord, for forgive me for all the sins that which I have committed because the wages of sin is there. Because guess what? We are all going to die someday. Everybody has an appointed time where God is going to call our name. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to say, Lord, have mercy on me. You remember when I was telling you? About my son, Ellis, who took his train and gave it to his younger brother, Emerson. And Emerson had pulled the tracks together and made a big round track. And he would take his train and go around and around in a circle. And every now and again, as he'd go around in a circle, his train would go off the track and do this, then put it back and go round and round in a circle. Well, Ellis came downstairs and said, Emerson, here you go. Here's some more tracks for you. Oh, my goodness. That's a preacher moment right there. Y'all missed a shout. Because at the end of the day, what Ellis did, Ellis just gave Emerson some more tracks. In other words, Ellis says to Emerson, you don't have to keep going around and around and around in circles. I'm giving you a track where you can leave the place where you are and go into another destination. You don't have to worry about going off the track no more because I got more tracks that, you, that are laid for you to roll on. Oh, what are you saying, Reverend Miller? Oh, that's the bottom line is some of us are caught in a, a, a track called sin. And we're going around and around and around and around in circles. And it seems like we can't get off of that track. And it seems like we keep wrecking on that track. It's the same track, the same circle we keep going around and around and around. Circles on. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, some of us are on that train going around and around in the same sin. But God says, I sent my son. Jesus Christ, and now you got extra tracks you can go on. You don't have to keep going around in circles. Mm. You don't have to keep going around with the exact same destination. I laid the groundwork. I've laid the tracks so you can go in a different direction that your sin have brought you from. Now you can leave and go another way. My, my, my. See, that's the problem with so many people nowadays. We're so caught up in a sinful nature that we always want to do, watch this, we always want to do a 360. But don't miss it. If you're doing a 360, only thing you're doing is going around in circles. That's all you're doing. If you tell people, I'm going to do a 360, all you're doing is going around in circles and come right back to the same thing you did before. What you need to do is like, I'm going to do a 180. That means I'm going to turn from what I've been doing and go in another direction. Amen, somebody. How many people right now are saying, I'm going to do a 180? 
There's some things I've been doing I'm going to turn away from and walk away from and go another direction. There's some things that have kept me going around in circles, but now I got a new track I can go on and I can leave the things behind me and go forward and aim for the mark of the high calling. Amen, somebody. Because he died for my sins, he died for your sins, and we got an opportunity for everlasting life. And all we got to do is say, Father, forgive me. Have mercy on me. I'm not worthy, but Lord, I'm just asking you to forgive me. And just like that, God forgive you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining uh, me on this morning. I'm so excited. Check out our page. Uh, if you do go online, go to your giving app, uh, Give Us Fly. It's a giving app right there on your phone. Make a donation to Wesley Union Amy's on Church. Just go on your on your iPhone, your smartphone, download Give Us Fly. Make a donation to the work and the ministry that we're doing. Because here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, we are doing a major work, a major ministry. It's a tax deductible donation you can make. We are feeding the homeless. Uh, looking out for children, uh, blessing those with tutorial sessions here at our church to coming in, in their future. And God is just in the blessing business. And so we want to be able to reach back and bless those in our community who are affected by this pandemic, those who don't have hand sanitizer, uh, those who need a meal, those who need people to go out and shop for them. That's what we're here, we're here for. You can bless the ministry. You can mail us a donation if you want to. P.O. Box 5124. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17110. Once again, that mailing address is P.O. Box 5124, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17110. Or you can go online to give it a fly and make a donation there. May God bless you and have a continued smile upon you. And see you next week for an impact session.